Hello everyone, how is everybody doing? I'm still arranging some of the stuff over here on my screen. All right, let's see. How do I share the link? Okay. Let's see over here. How's everybody doing? Go ahead and write in the chat where you're from. Uh, that, that always helps. And where did you he hear about this live stream? I think maybe you heard about it on Twitter. Uh, let's see. All right, still getting up, yet still getting ready. All right, everyone can see my screen. We are about to begin. We are, yep, yeah, we are I'm gonna give like a couple of more minutes. Everyone can settle in. It's just going to be a small session. I'm just gonna cover how you can do or introduce you to the Vapor framework. Uh, yeah, we will write code. It's not gonna be slides or anything. So after attending this, you will have much better idea of how to get started with Vapor Framework. So first of all, everyone can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, Switzerland, wow. Switzerland, Switzerland, Switzerland. Place to go, place to go, huh? That's I think the number one place on everybody's list is to just go to Switzerland. Maybe, and hopefully one day I'll be able to visit Beautiful Switzerland. Always fun to see where people are logging in from. We have uh, Torsten Bernhard from Switzerland. If you're joining, go ahead and write in the comments, uh, the YouTube com uh, the YouTube chat, uh, where are you from? That is going to definitely help. I'm drinking tur Turkish coffee. All right. Bring hiking boots with you. All right, I will bring hiking boots with me. I love hiking. Unfortunately, the place where I live, there's no hiking over here. <laughs> the closest good hikes is uh, you have to take a flight to Colorado. I'm in Houston, Texas. So luckily the flights are pretty cheap to Colorado, but obviously you are in Switzerland, the best of the best, the most beautiful place probably on the planet. So, wow. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, this will be a very basic introduction session for vapor, all right? Oops, what happened over here? <laughs> what happened to my, well, that's the first. They just closed it, all right. All right, then we have uh, from Egypt, living in Berlin, Mu El Sifi, all right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Let's go ahead and uh, get started with this, all right? So we will be discussing introduction to Vapor. This means that uh, we will look into that how you can use Swift language to create your own server, to run your own server, which is actually pretty cool that you can do that. Uh, here's a little bit of information about me. My name is Mohammed Azam. I go by Azam, my last name. I'm an iOS developer as well as an instructor, so I teach uh, for a living, uh, for a coding bootcamp. And apart from that, I also run uh, my own website, which you may have uh, already seen, Azam Sharp School, uh, which hosts one of the largest collection of iOS tutorials. Uh, I do go to conferences, uh, speak, I do I write articles and I've written a couple of books on iOS development, but mostly I think I'm mostly like a video person, so I do mostly video uh, publishing. All right. If I run this right now, 
There we go. Adam Sharp School, a little bit about Adam Sharp School. As I mentioned, it is one of the largest uh, collection. It hosts one of the largest collection for iOS development courses. And apart from courses, I also host workshops over there. So you can definitely check out those workshops. Uh, the prices that you see might be a little bit different. This is old pricing. Workshops are now different pricing. Uh, they're mostly like $129. And they run for like three or four, three hours at least uh, for workshops. But definitely check out uh, Adam Sharp School. That's my website. And you can also become a member of Adam Sharp School monthly where you will get like 22 courses, all the courses, and you will get monthly Q&A as well as 50% off on your, uh, you know, on the workshop. So it's a pretty good deal. All right. And we'll do monthly Q&A also. One is actually or monthly meet meetups and one is coming up tomorrow. So that's always fun to meet new people and talk about, you know, what they're working on, share knowledge. I think that's what Adam Sharp School is all about. All right. Vapor. So anyone over here has already worked with the Vapor framework? Uh, have you ever installed Vapor? And because this session is going to be very basic, it's going to talk about that how you can get started with Vapor. We are not going to go into database integration, MVC pattern, and authentication that requires way, way, way more time to do. Uh, but we're just going to try to see what Vapor is and how you can install Vapor and kind of like create a basic Hello World application, create different routes. So after this session, you will have much more understanding of what Vapor is and how you can use Vapor to create your backend, which can be used by your iOS application, web application, and so on, all right? So the website URL is vapor.codes. I'm going to share it right there in your YouTube chat. And Vapor is a framework uh, that allows you to run your Swift, your favorite language, Swift, on the server. And using that, you can create APIs. You can, using that, you can even create, uh, you know, server pages. So Vapor is super powerful. And I think as an iOS developer, once you're comfortable with the basics of iOS, UI kit or Swift UI, whatever you're using, your next step should always be to learn backend development. Uh, very important, all right? Okay, everyone can hear me uh, correctly. You can go ahead in the chat, you can, you can give a thumbs up or something if you can hear me correctly. Because sometimes, you know, the stream can be laggy. I can already see some messages that stream is not smooth enough, but if you can hear me, that's all that matters. If you can see it, you, that's all that matters. All right. Okay, so it looks like maybe you can hear me. I'm not really seeing any, anyone sharing any chat messages or YouTube chat. Uh, if you do have a question, you can definitely type on the YouTube chat, by the way. Okay. Now, the first thing when you're getting started with Vapor is you need to install Vapor. All right. So in order to install Vapor, you will go to Get Started. And you will go to Install right there. And I think most of you are running Mac OS. That's fine, right? I mean, we just go to Mac OS. Uh, make sure that you're running Xcode latest version, whatever is on the App Store for Xcode, just download that, just use that. And next thing that you need to do is to install Vapor. All right, now one of the things you will see over here, okay, so a few frames are dropping. Yeah, you know, uh, my connection where I live, it's it's dropping most of the time, so not much I can do. I'm actually plugged in, hardwired, but still it's just, that's, that's where things are over here, all right? Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to install Vapor. And in order to install Vapor, you need to install brew. Because if you run this command in your terminal, it's not gonna work because you have not installed brew. So how do we install brew? 
Well, we got to go over here, brew.sh. Okay, so over here, I'm going to share this in your chat. Brew.sh or brew is simply a package manager. So you can think of it as like an NPM or what's the other one, CocoaPods, but it's for Mac, all right? So the first thing you will have to do is to install brew. And the way that you install brew is simply run this line. Now I know it's kind of like a long line, but this is going to install brew on your machine. And the easiest way is to just click on that copy button. It will just copy this particular line. And now you can just go to your terminal. I mean, open up the terminal. And anywhere on the terminal, you can just paste this line and run this. Now, I'm not going to run this because I have already installed brew. So I'm not going to run that, but you can run this. All right. And how do we clear the control K? Uh, I don't know how to clear this. I forgot. Anyway, so once you install brew, you will be ready to install vapor. And that is where you will run this command brew install vapor. That is going to install Vapor on your machine, provided that you have already installed Brew. Again, I have already installed Vapor, so I'm not going to run this command, but I am going to run this one, which is called Vapor Help, just to make sure that the Vapor is installed on my machine. So let's go to the terminal and say Vapor Help. And when I run Vapor Help, you can see that it shows me some sort of, uh, you know, message over here. Uh, it shows me that some sort of a help dialog. So that means that Vapor is actually installed successfully on my machine, which is great. All right. So once the Vapor is installed, and by the way, if you have any questions, you can just type out your questions in the YouTube video, uh, YouTube chat, sorry, and I'll be able to help you out with your questions. All right. All right, so at this point, and it might take a while for you to install Brew, so no worry, um, you know, you can just, you know how to install it, it's right there in the documentation, and then you can install Brew, run Vapor Help, just to make sure that you have successfully installed Vapor. All right, the next step we want to do is, although we have installed these different things, uh, we want to create a Vapor project. So I'll go to the next one, getting started, and hello world. Their documentation is actually pretty good. Uh, and apart from the documentation, the community for Vapor is even better. Uh, community means if you go and find their Discord channel and you join, if you have any question, they're more than happy to, to answer those questions. All right. And it's weird, I'm, I'm giving you this presentation on Swift and Vapor while I'm wearing a Flutter shirt. So, irony. All right, so here we go. We have the new project. Okay, so how do we make the new project? Well, in Vapor, after you have installed Brew, after you have installed Vapor, you run Vapor new and then the name of the project and then hyphen N. Hyphen N over here means that it's gonna create a very basic project uh, kind of like an empty project, which is great because that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go on to the desktop. Desktop. And on the desktop, I can run vapor. And let's see what the command is. New. Hello vapor. That's the name of the project slash M. So hello vapor over here is the name of my project. Now, if you want to name your project something different, then obviously you will use something different. Now, let me go ahead and run this. And it's pretty much done. You can see there's nice, really beautiful graphics for Vapor, and it's already done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go to that folder, Hello Vapor. So now I'm inside Hello Vapor folder, all right? So now we have created our Hello Vapor project, our first Vapor project. And what I want to do is to open in Xcode because 
you know, I mean, when, when we're using Swift language, most of the time we're using Xcode. I mean, you can use anything you want, but most of the time we're using Xcode. So how do I open Xcode? Well, there are many different ways. Uh, I can just go ahead and open package.swift file, and that's automatically going to open uh, Xcode. So I'm going to say open package.swift right there. Open package.swift. So that's going to open Xcode because the default application to open a Swift file is Xcode. And there we go. It's actually starting Xcode. All right. Not sure what's going on over here. Okay, it's trying to download something. You can see processing file. I'm kind of scared of why it's giving me this red question mark over here. It shouldn't. Um, maybe it's still trying to process something, but that's kind of dangerous. Let's see what's going on over here. Waker is using Swift tool version, but the installed version is five point something. Okay, that I have never seen. And why is it selecting my phone? Okay, well, uh, not sure what's going on over here. How do I change the version number? Let's see. Well, that's not good. I thought that it's going to just run correctly. Let me open it again. Vapor updated to, of course, Vapor updated to 5.10. So how do I do that? How do I change it? Uh, check the package.swift. Let's check out the package.swift. So I'm looking at package.swift. Um, so this is the one. So maybe I need to change this to 5.10, okay. Swift tools version. How do I update Swift Tools version? First line. Oh, Swift Tools version over here. So I should change it to, what is going on? What is it saying? Is using tool version 5 point, but the install version is 5.90? Do I need to change something over here? Steven? I mean, over here it says, change the tool version to, uh, can't really see what you have written. Let's see, it's covering, it's covered by the heart, <laughs> heart emoji, 5.9. Okay, so you're saying it changed the, this version to 5.9. All right, and I don't know why it's saying connecting to iPhone. I mean, there we go. Okay, so make sure that you're not connecting to iPhone. Make sure you're connecting to uh, the Mac. So I have changed it over here. Of course, this all has to happen when you're actually going a, doing a live demo. That's the fun part, I think. All right, so that is changed. Now it's compiling. So only thing that I did, and thanks, Stephen, is change the tool version to 5.9, all right? And now it's compiling, everything is ready, and make sure that you're selecting My Mac or whatever your Mac is. Don't select uh, Foon. You're trying to run Vapor Server on your Mac. So your Mac will be hosting the server, all right? Or we'll be running the server. Okay, let's check out what we have over here in the Vapor folder. But before we do that, let's just go ahead and run the app, all right? And you can run the server by just clicking on this play button and that's going to um, run this, all right? You can update your Xcode tool chain to support 5.0, but this should work. Okay, I will do that later. So let me go ahead and run this. Hello, Indra. Thank you for joining. And since this is the first time I'm running, it might take a little bit of time to run. And you will see some message like a warning about working directory. Don't worry too much about that. We'll fix that a little bit later. But the first thing always is run it. Run it and see that does it even work or not, all right? So a couple of different things you see in the when you're running it the first time 
if you see a warning, okay, we'll fix that. Don't worry about that. We'll fix that later. And here, here it is. It's saying server starting on this particular URL, which is basically localhost 8080. So go ahead and type this out or copy this into a browser. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy. Probably I, it should move it to a separate, separate screen. That will be a little bit easier. All right, here we go. And there we go. All right, so this is a very good site. When you see this and it says it works, that means that your vapor server is actually running. And that's actually really good, which means that you have now used Swift to run a server. If you go to this URL, it will say it works. It sends you back something, which is kind of cool. Now, I can also go to a route call, I believe it's called hello, and it tells me or it shows me some sort of a different, it sends back a different response. All right, so this is pretty cool. Like we are able to uh, run the server. Um, Indra, if you want to ask questions, yeah, I would say related to what we are doing, like a vapor introduction to vapor, you can definitely ask. All right, so how does that even work? Now let's go ahead and take a look at our code. There are multiple folders over here. You can see right there, multiple folders. Let's go to the sources, app, controllers is empty. There's nothing there. Don't worry about controllers. We have the entry point. Let me actually make sure that the size of the font is bigger. Two, three, four, five, six. I think that's already too big. Hopefully everyone will able to see this. That's too big actually for me, but Entry point file is kind of like the entry point of your app. Uh, it's kind of like the main. It sets up the environment and bootstrap, creates, configure. It does all of the stuff, all right? Um, configure is where you will configure your middleware, your routes. Um, you will do maybe authentication stuff and database connection. We don't care about this right now. Don't worry about it. The only file we worry about, the only file we care about right now, because this is a kind of like a very basic introduction, is the routes file, all right? And in the routes file, you can see that I have these two routes which are already there because Vapor implemented kind of like this basic code for us, all right? Um, we can see your messages, uh, Ryan, we can see your messages, okay. So what is this route saying? Well, this route is kind of like the root route. And it means that when you go to your website, which is 127.0.0.1 local uh, 8080, uh, this route is going to get invoked or triggered. And this route, the hello route, is going to be the same thing. Well, let's actually double check it over here. There we go. It's going to be the same thing, but it will end with hello, all right, like this, like this. So you can think of this route as like your root route. So if you're building a website, let's say you're building a website is mywebsite.com, this is going to be that route. And if you're building a website, the same website, but with a different URL, this will be hello. All right, so that's a good way to understand the root route over here. The root route is, um, you know, the root route will be the one which is saying my website dot something. All right, so let's go ahead and see that how can we create a route that returns us. And yes, we are actually going to be building an API, uh, not going to be building a complete API to consume it, but building an API so that we can understand what's going on. So the first API I would like to build is, or the API endpoint is, what about if I want to do an API for movies? Maybe I'll go to this route, and now I'm saying only slash movies because we already are kind of saying it's gonna prefix with 127.0.0.18080, but what if I want to create a route called movies? App.get movies, all right? And when we are creating a route for movies, it's going to return you an array of movies, right? So let's go ahead and first say request async. It's gonna return something. There we go. 
in and we can return movies. And you will see that this is not the best way to return movies, but we're just returning something. All right, so we're returning uh, Batman, Spider-Man, let's say Finding Nemo, and so on. Um, I've already learned Vapor for a while, but the job demand for Vapor is very limited, or I would say is none. What do you think? Um, I think Vapor is being used in many different places, and the whole point of learning Vapor, or I think any kind of a backend, is once you learn one backend, you will be able to um, to use it. I mean, Vapor currently looks pretty much like Express. Express JS is super popular. So once you learn one backend, you can easily transfer those skills to the next one. And if you're creating your own application and you need a backend, well, Vapor is always there to help you. All right, but there are. It's not as popular as Express. It's not as popular as Ruby on Rails or Spring Boot or Django, you know, but it is still a lot of companies, including Apple, uses Vapor in certain scenarios or in certain uh, sections of their uh, frameworks or their services. All right, so we created a new route called Movies and it's returning you a bunch of movies. Let's see how this will work. So if I run my application right now, and remember the route is now movies. So let me run it. Take some time to run. And let's go to movies. This is our route, movies. And there we go. You can see over here that it's returning an array of movies. All right. Well, this is all good. Don't get me wrong, this is all good. But I mean, you're returning strings. Right, a movie can have other stuff also. Uh, movie can have a name, movie has an ear that it will publish, a director name, actors, so many other things. And returning string, although it's fine, but you always kind of return or you try to return an uh, array of objects. So how can we represent a movie not as a string, but as an object, as a model? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate folder and let's go a separate folder. I'll call it models. And inside this model over here, I'm gonna create a file, we'll call it movie. So this will be your actual model, all right? You can also call this a DTO because it is a DTO, data transfer object. Um, and this model will be returned to the client. So the first thing I'll do is import Vapor. And now you will simply go ahead and define your model. Struct movie. Movie can have a name. And let's say the movie can even have like a year or if the movie can have a genre and so on. So two things. Now, one of the things that in Vapor they included is this content protocol. And whenever you're creating these models, these DTOs, data transfer objects, make sure that they are conforming to the content. And you might think, okay, hold on, what is this content? Well, if you go to the content, you'll find out that the content is simply making sure that your model is decodable and encodable. And this is content is part of the Vapor framework. So it really helps to conform to the content uh, so that you can easily return a decoded version of your movies and also encode them when necessary. So this is our movie model. It's a pretty simple model, as you can see. We're not doing anything crazy. Let's go back to our routes. And in our routes, now we should be able to return movies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create movies over here movies and I'll assign an array of movies and now I can simply return the movies. Nice and simple, All right? But I need to also change the string to movie because now we're returning a movie and not really a string. So Chris is asking that 
I wonder if full stack Swift development would be useful for any future AI focus framework that Apple might develop any thoughts. Well, that means that the, that means the data has to travel, uh, you know, I mean, Apple, I think most of the time what Apple is doing is that they're, they're doing the training uh, on the device, or well, not training on the device, but the model is on the device, right? Um, so what you're saying is that you will use a vapor framework or some sort of uh, full stack development framework that is going to send the information to maybe Apple platform and then the training will happen over there. Uh, if they can find a nice and secure way, I think that's the way to do it um, because then they can control, Apple can control the model uh, and they can update the model based on the user data. Having said that, you know, Apple is very crazy about privacy. So we'll have to see that how Apple will, because they always say, hey, your data never leaves the device. Your data never leaves the device. We train on the model, we train on the device, we train on the device. So it will be interesting to see, but that's definitely should be the way to do it because then Apple will have more control over the models. They can get the data from us and they can train the model. Uh, let me go ahead and run this. And I'll be able to go to the movies. And if I refresh this, now you see a really nice response. And now the movies are not returning as an array of strings. They are being returned as array of objects. So each movie has a name and a genre, but you can add other things if you want to. So that's the beauty, that's a good thing about uh, sending models back instead of sending string back. All right. So this is how we will send the information. But how do we post? Like if I have to send you a movie, like if I'm trying to add a movie or create a movie, then how would I do that? And we can use the same technique over here, but for the post route. So app.post, and you can see that app.post requires a URL. I'm gonna say movies, request, async, throws. And what do you want to return when a movie is created? Well, I'll just return the same movie when the movie is created. All right. Now you might say, hold on a second. Didn't we already use this particular route? I mean, you're using movies over here and this route is also movies. Well, yes, both routes are exactly the same. The only difference is that the, the bottom route over here, this route, the post is using post method while the top one is using the get method. So that's what differentiates the route between the two. All right, Stephen, thanks for joining. Hope to see you again. All right, so over here, uh, another question is, what do you think about less job for native mobile developers, especially the tech winter like right now? There are more jobs for hybrid tech stack. I think that depends where you are. I wouldn't say that there are more jobs for hybrid developers versus native. It really depends where you are. I think if you're in the metro area like New York and California and Seattle, all of those cool places, then they're still doing a lot of native development. If you're in a place like I am, like Houston, Texas, there's not much native going on. It's all Xamarin, it's all React native and things like that. So it really depends. Okay, so we are going over here, post. This means that somebody is gonna be posting something, right? Posting means they will be sending information they will be sending a new movie. So we need to decode the movie. And how do we decode? We try to use request.content.decode and we decode it as a movie, all right? And then we will get the actual movie that we can send it back. Now the sending back is just for demo purposes, per purposes. All right, basically save the movie in the database and then return the movie. So this is how the flow will be that if you are trying to create a brand new movie, you will post the movie to this route 
you will decode the movie and then you will return the same movie. We are doing it for demo purposes, but you will basically add the movie to the database. But how do we invoke this? We cannot really do this with our Chrome browser. We have to use something else. I mean, get requests we can do with the Chrome browser, but post request we cannot do with the Chrome browser. So for that, I always recommend use some sort of a networking tool like Postman. Now, you may not like Postman. You may say, okay, I don't like this tool. Maybe I can use a different tool. And yeah, sure, go ahead and use any tool you want. Uh, we're just trying to use a networking tool, all right? So here's our Postman. And the reason I'm using Postman is I want to make a request to my server. Before I do that, make sure that your server is running. Let's go ahead and run the server. If you are not running the server, then you're not going to be able to do anything with the server. It's not running. So now it's running. Uh, let's go ahead and open out Postman. And this is an important step. And I always recommend my students also to always use some sort of a networking tool when you are trying to do a post request or any kind of a request before you jump onto your Swift UI or UIKit client. Because if you don't check your request using Postman or a similar tool, and you just immediately jump to your client site code using whatever, Swift UI, UIKit, uh, then you have two points of failure. You can fail either on the Swift UI side or you can even fail on the server side and then it will be hard to debug. So I need to be 100% sure that if I am creating these routes, it is working before I move to the client side. The route is called movies. So let's go ahead and do movies and it's gonna be post. So let's go ahead and select post. Headers, I always send in a content type header, which is application JSON, which basically is saying that I'm gonna be sending JSON to the server. And then select the body. The body is where you'll be sending an actual thing. So I'm gonna select raw because I would like to type in the actual body of JSON. And this is the body that you're sending. You're sending the name of the movie, Lord of the Rings, and you are sending the genre, whatever, fantasy, all right? Now, why did I name this name and genre? Any, any ideas? Anyone has an answer to that? Why did I name it name and genre? Why can't I just name it like title? What's gonna happen if I name it title? I mean, it's just JSON, I can just name it anything I want. Anyone have any answer to that? What led me to name it the key name to be named. All right. So let's see. Let's see that why have I named this name and genre. Keep in mind that when you are typing the body over here, this body is going to be sent to the server on this particular URL using the post action, that post method. So when you send this body, which contains two different properties or keys, name and genre, this particular route will be invoked because we're doing a post on movies. And it's going to try to decode the body to the movie model. The movie model should match exactly the name of the keys that you're sending, which is name and genre, in their properties. So right over here, you can see those keys should be matching. And that's the reason that we are giving it the same exact key. All right, so I think this is pretty good. We can go ahead and run this now and send it. And you can see that when I send it back or send the request, I get the same exact thing back, which is telling me that it's working for me. I mean, it's working and it's returning us the correct response. And the reason is that right over here in my routes, once I decode the movie, I, I send the movie the same thing back. All right, so that's the main reason that now I know it's working. Now in your actual application, you will be 
uh, saving it to the database and then you know doing some validations and all the stuff and then saving and then returning back the new movie that you just created but we're not really connecting to database so we're just trying to make it simple all right so now we have done the movies we have done getting the movies we have done the posting the movies the other thing that i want to cover is what about if i want to get the movies get the movies based on the genre hmm well that's interesting because in different api endpoints which you may have seen or may have even used you may have already checked out the requirements that there are some endpoints where people can simply pass in the genre so if i say movies movie slash action it should give me all the action movies if i pass in movie slash fantasy it should give me all the fantasy movies if i say movie slash kids it's going to give me all the movies for kids but does that mean that i have to create three different routes well let's go ahead and do that maybe we do have to create three different routes so we'll say movies slash action and we're going to get the request async and we're going to return the movies based on the genre and then we will return something whatever doesn't matter so movies over here is going to be matching with movies and action is going to be matching with action so that's just one route that i created where a person can enter this route is for movies slash action because i'm saying movies first and then action second it's going to be movies slash action but what about the movies slash fantasy okay well probably have to do this fantasy over here and what about the kids movies oh yeah i need to create another route for kids movies well it will work but that's not really a sustainable solution in the long term what about that instead of three genres what about if you have 10 different genres or 20 different genres i mean that's going to be like a lot of routes that you'll be creating a lot of actions these things routes right so this is definitely not one of those situation that you want to get into i mean you will end up with like a lot and it will get even worse when somebody will say that oh uh, can we filter the movies based on the year like maybe if somebody can pass in the year kind of like this movie slash action for 1994 well how many routes are you going to create uh, how far back are you going to go i mean this is going to be like hundreds of routes if you are targeting movies from today and minus like century ago right so that's not that's not good so what can we do well in this situation what we can use is we can use dynamic routing and what dynamic routing allows you to do is you can create a route but you can pass in kind of like a placeholder over here and this is going to match all the routes let me actually go ahead and first type it in so this particular route is kind of like similar to the other routes that we have written but the only difference is that we are putting this colon over here and that colon is saying that this is a route parameter now what does that mean route parameter well the route parameter over here means that you can pass in anything after movies so this is going to match slash movie slash action this is going to match slash movie slash one two three which is not really good because you can pass in all of that stuff slash movies slash i don't know fantasy all right so it's going to match everything where this part is the one that is changing and that will be in the variable called genre now what does that mean how do we access the genre i mean if you're passing movie slash action how do i get action how do i get access to the action 
oh, sorry, how do I get access to the genre, right? Because you need to get access to the genre if you want to do any filtering, right? So how do we get access? Well, you'll say request.parameters.get. So these are parameters. These things that you're passing, these are called the parameters, which will be living in a variable called genre. It doesn't have to be genre. It can be anything. It doesn't matter what the variable name that you're giving. It's just something that I made up. It makes sense because it is actually a genre, but you can see ABC over here, that's fine too. But genre is more practical because it means something. So genre, so whatever we pass over here, that is the thing that I'm trying to extract from the uh, route parameters. So request.parameters.get, that's gonna give us a genre. Let's go ahead and put a genre into a variable called genre. If there's something wrong, then well, if you're not passing that, then we can abort and we can say it's a bad request. All right, but this is up to you, like what do you want to do when it's a bad request or it's not a bad request. And this can throw us. And finally, what I'm gonna do is you can go ahead and get the movies for the genre. Uh, I'm actually going to cheat over here. I'm just gonna return the genre as a string. There we go, genre, all right? So whatever genre that we're passing, we're just gonna return that genre. Now, if you do want to return the movies with the genre, I need to get the movies array and then we can do that. I mean, I can, I guess, I can, I have time, I can do that a little bit over here. There we go. All right. Keeping in mind that these things are, you know, not lowercase or even uppercase. So if you're trying to return an array of movies, like this, it may not match correctly, right? So if I go over here and say uh, movies dot filter dollar sign dot name of the movie will be equal to, not the name, sorry, the genre, right? So genre of the movie will be equal to the genre. Uh, this may not even match correctly because of both are different. I mean, this casing is different, so you have to do like a lower case and this has to be lowercase. Let's go ahead and build it. So hopefully now, if I pass in action, I'm only going to get Batman. If I pass in kids, I'm only going to get Finding Nemo. I think these are the only two movies we have, uh, but we can try it out. We can try to run this and see if it actually works as we expect it to. So I'll go to movies slash kids. And there we go, we only get kids movies. We're filtering it correctly. What about if I go and say action movies? We get Batman. What about if I say horror movies, which is my favorite movies? I got nothing. There are no horror movies. All right. So there you go. We have learned about setting up Vapor. We have learned about get post, get and post, and also dynamic routes. Now, this is just kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Vapor is way more stuff you can do with Vapor. Uh, so the, your next steps, uh, if you want to learn more about Vapor, I do have a lot of courses on Vapor and I also did a workshop on Vapor. So if you check out these courses, uh, this is the course that I'm talking about, which is the full stack development course. And this covers like a lot of Vapor stuff. So this is gonna go into, you know, you can see the over here, what is full stack development, routing, controllers, middleware, Postgres database. Uh, it's gonna cover like grocery app project, even a JWT authentication, MongoDB, logging, creating shared packages. I mean, it just goes on forever. I mean, this is kind of like the complete course that is available. It just goes on and on. You can see that. And even deployment on Heroku. I mean, what's the point of creating anything if you can't really deploy it? So we're just gonna do uh, the deployment on Heroku over here. All right, so this is a great course. I'll, I'll link the course over here. Uh, there we go. And I also do workshops. If you if you like this kind of a small workshop, uh, the, the bigger one is available. The big, you can, uh, that's gonna be like a three hour long workshop, but that's kind of like, depends if you want to, you know, do hands-on kind of thing. So workshops are also available. And I think the best way to get any access to any of these things is to, 
what most people do is they simply become like a member and they get access to everything, all the courses, and they also get like a 50% off on workshop and they also do monthly Q&A access, which monthly Q&A is actually tomorrow uh, for all the pro members. So I'm gonna be hosting probably around the same time, I think it's like 11 to 12, but it's only for the pro members. So th that invitation is already sent to the pro members. Uh, monthly Q&A, meet and greet, whatever. I mean, you know, it's like, it's a great place to kind of like hang out, uh, you know, uh, hang out and talk and all of the question, whether it's related to the career, whether it's related, related to technology question, if I can help. I mean, I, know, I don't know every single thing, but if I know the answer, I'll definitely, uh, monthly Q&A, I'll definitely help them out, all right? But that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you so much for coming. And hopefully we can do these kind of small workshops or small live streams, uh, you know, every week or every other week. But uh, hopefully you have a much better idea of, uh, you know, of Vapor. And actually one thing I would like to give you all for free, if you go to courses, let me actually see where it is. Uh, oh, I'm gonna give it to you for free, all right. AdamSharpTeachable.com uh, I'm going to give you, there's a course, I mean, you can always go to the azamshar.teachable.com also. It's the same website. And there's a course on Vapor. There we go. Learn Vapor in an hour. And this is a free course. I'm going to put the link right there on your chat. You can get access to this course. Um, keep in mind, and this is the important part, this course is only free for a limited time. All right, so probably if you are watching this, and it's the end of the month, there's a very good chance that this course is not free. So go ahead and enroll it right now because uh, you know, every month I try to do like one free course and uh, in a couple of, it's like what, 14, 15 days, this will not be free. So good idea to just enroll it. And this is going to cover kind of like the same things that we did today with the source code and everything. And it's a small course, even less than an hour, so you can just go through it really quickly. You can see it's a pretty small course, right? All right, everyone, thank you so much um, for attending. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. And we'll try to do these again uh, as I will get more time. Uh, I did, I think, last week or the week before, I did it on Swift data. Um, so we'll, we'll see what topics to cover, uh, but it will be kind of like a small, uh, live stream videos. But once again, thank you so much uh, for attending and definitely check out azamsharp.school. We have our first meet and greet tomorrow or first q and I call it meet and greet because we're just meeting tomorrow, uh, 11 to 12 for, uh, for all the members. But uh, I'll be hosting that every month. All right. Uh, once again, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you basically uh, in the future with another live stream. Thank you. And if you're on Twitter, by the way, you can follow me on, uh, what's my URL actually? Uh, Twitter, I think it's Adam Sharp. Yeah, there we go, Adam Sharp. I'll put the Twitter over there so you can access it. Probably you already know. But again, thank you so much. And I will catch you in the next live stream. Thank you.